Hey, so, we're not live. Oh, yeah. No, we are. Yeah, we are. We're live. <laughs> Hello and welcome, everyone, to the UK Crime Book Club pub quiz. Just not in a pub, no. This week we are once again in my kitchen, but we're also in the kitchens or the bedrooms or the offices or the living rooms of Catherine Cooper and Hello. Caroline Maston. Um, Catherine, you're the author of the Chalet, the Chateau, the Cruise. We're very glad to have you on uh, on board today. How are you feeling? I'm good, thank you. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Excellent stuff. And any pre-competition nerves this evening? Or you feeling... um, no, I don't really know what's going to happen, so I'm just going to wait and see. I, I do <laughs> always say that the ignorance is bliss approach is the best way to handle okay. this quiz, or, or most things in life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Kaz, you're a, you're a little bit of a wily veteran of the quiz these days. Uh, how are you? I am now, aren't I? Um, what, is this the third time? Potentially. Yeah. Ready to make a fool of myself again? Well, we, we don't do falls here. We don't do falls here. No, what we do do is we do a very nice layback quiz. Um, five rounds of questions this week. Uh, there are more than 25 points on offer. So it's five rounds of five questions. However, in some of the rounds, there are bonus points on offer. And I will let you know when. Uh, we've also got the return of Sam's favourite round, Book Manto, which we will come to later on in the evening. And I'll explain the rules to that little gem later on. But for the benefit of those playing along for the first time, let me explain what you need to do. You will need a pen and a paper to write down your answers. We'll go for each round one by one. At the end of each round, we will then go through the answers with my guests on screen. There's no shouting out from my guests. There's no writing the answers in the chat. It's just write them down, mark your own. There's no prizes for the winner. There's no humiliation for the loser. It's all just a little bit of fun and a chance to get out, to know our guests. So is everyone feeling like they understand what we're doing? I like the comment. It doesn't say who it's from, but it says veteran or sucker for punishment. <laughs> I can't see anything on the chat. Oh, that's because I've got private chat up. That would explain why. Let's go to the comments. Hello, everyone. There you are. I wondered where everyone was. I was feeling lonely. Right. So round one, as ever, is books. Yes, this is the UK Crime Book Club, after all. So we do need to do a round on books. I've got five questions about books. And we will begin now with question number one. Peter Usborne, founder of the children's book publisher, Usborne Publishing, sadly passed away early this month. But which satirical magazine did he co-found in the 1960s? Oh, I wish I could see who everyone's name was. I might pop up the Facebook group so I can just see names. No, I'll have to be careful not to get everyone talking over me there we go i will repeat that question peter usborne founder of the children's book publisher usborne publishing sadly passed away earlier this month but which satirical magazine did he co-found in the 1960s that's question number one folks and i will if i remember because i always forget put the questions in the chat but as i said There we go. I said I'd have to be careful not to get it talking, but I didn't. Question number two. Cast a Cold Eye is the second book in the Inspector Jimmy Dreghorn series set in 1930s Glasgow, but by which author? So can you repeat the question? Yes, of course. Thank you. Cast a Cold Eye is the second book in the Inspector Jimmy Dreghorn series Set in 1930s Glasgow, but by which author? Just come out recently. Is this one where I should have read the newsletter? Uh, we, I mean, I haven't actually put the newsletter out yet this month. It's been a busy month. <laughs> Donna's asking if she can randomly insult you throughout, then I guess that's me she's talking to. Yeah, you usually do, Donna. Crack on. Sorry, I'm just trying to get some windows in the right places. There we go. That's better. I can see everything now. Question number three. Which Strictly Come Dancing judge announced their debut novel last month entitled, imaginatively, Murder on the Dance Floor? Oh, I know that one. The Brains yeah, Trust yeah. that came up with that title, I tell you. This is the first one I know. <laughs> <laughs> I should have led with this one, shouldn't I? I should have opened with this one. one. Yeah. But 
it can only get easier from here on in, surely. Question number three again. Which Strictly Come Dancing judge announced their debut novel last month entitled Murder on the Dance Floor? Question number four. What is special about the new vending machine at Exeter St. David Railway Station? Question four again. What is special about the new vending machine at Exeter St. David Railway Station? And finally, question number five. Harrogate was in the news last month as the Figston Old Peculiar Crime Writing Festival announced its lineup. But how many years of the festival will it mark this year? Mm. And you'll see who's read the uh, <laughs> the post by the festival because it's all over it. Question five again. Harrogate was in the news last month as the Thigston Old Peculiar Crime Writing Festival announced its lineup. How many years of the festival will it be this year? Now, before we get into the answers, there, Catherine, I'll come to you. Um, let's talk a little bit about your your background in history as a writer. Where where did you begin, and uh, how did you get to where we are now? Um, well, it's a bit lengthy, um, but I I've always written since I was a child, really. Um, my my first book, Full Legs Novel, I finished was um, in around 2002, because it was around the time my son was born, um, so quite a long time ago now. Um, that was what was then called Chick Lit, I guess they call it women's fiction now. Mm. Um, I had So I had an agent for that, she was very excited about it, um, but she didn't find the publisher for it. Um, and then um, the children were very small then, so I didn't write a lot um, for the next few years. And I wrote um, a few YA books, um, probably, I think, I think my agent submitted three or four. This is a different agent by now. Yeah. Um, again, unsuccessfully. <laughs> so I've, you know, uh, my agent's been very um, loyal to me, I guess, in a way. Um, and then um, I wrote, um, I thought I'd have a go at a thriller. Um, and I wrote The Chalet. Um, that was my um, which was the sort of the first book that was published. That was 2020. Um, that one was preempted by HarperCollins four days after, um, after it was submitted. So it can all change very quickly after very many years. Absolutely. I mean, you say your agents were loyal, but I mean, you submitted a number of books. So maybe they just weren't doing the job, Catherine. Maybe it was. Maybe it was them. Not. not... Your loyalty <laughs> to them is what we should be talking about. There. Isn't it? I think that the fact that. Um, they, my books weren't accepted and yet they would still have a go with another one. I think that was, I, I, I kind of. Yeah. 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 And you also, um, I believe, started before you were writing uh, for the novels, you were uh, writing uh, for, for uh, magazines and things. Yeah, yeah. And I, I still do that. Um, I started out as a um, tabloid journalist that everyone loves mm -hmm. to hate. Um, I also worked in TV for programmes like um, The Big Breakfast, for people who are old enough to remember that. Um, but and mainly daytime TV, um, mm. and then I went back to um, freelance journalism, mainly women's weekly magazines, um, and I still do um, quite a lot of, um, well not quite a lot, but I still do some travel journalism, which is partly why the books are based in very luxurious places, because they're play the kind of places that I'm lucky enough that to visit, even though I wouldn't be able to afford to go, pay, pay for myself to go. Um, I guess so, they, those research opportunities then. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, put, you can write those off then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excellent stuff. So, right, we'll go quickly through uh, the answers to the first round. Uh, question number one. Did anyone know the uh, magazine uh, that Peter Osborne co-founded in the 60s? I, I think I know. Yeah. Um, I, well, this year I put Private Eye, but actually I think it's Punch. It was Private Eye. Oh, okay. I got it right and first. He may, well have, he may yeah. well have co-founded Punch, but I didn't see that. Oh, <laughs> I know. Um... He's a bit... That was a lucky guess on my part. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yes, Private Eye he was the first managing director there from its formation in 1961, alongside others, including Richard Ingrams, Willie Rushton, Andrew Osmond. Uh, Osborne published children's books since the 1970s, and I'm sure anyone who has been a parent during that time, uh, myself included, has come across their books on numerous occasions. Uh, yes, an absolute godsend to those of us who've had kids since the 70s. 
Uh, question number two. Cast a Cold Eye, set in Glasgow in the 30s, is by which author? I don't know this one. It's Perfect. Robbie Morrison, also uh, the author of Edge of the Grave, which was out uh, last year or the year before. Yeah, um, cracking series. I, I can highly recommend uh, getting involved with that. Question number three. I think we had a couple of people who look like they're new in the, the chat here. Um, the Strictly Come Dancing judge announcing their debut novel entitled Murder on the Dance Floor was... It is indeed Shirley Ballas, yes. Co-written with Sheila McClure and out in October 2023. Um, would you ever co-write with a celeb, Catherine? Co-write with a celeb? Mm. Um, I can't really imagine co-writing. I'm always um, quite bamboozled by these couples like um, Ellery Lloyd and um, mm. they're a couple, aren't they? Nicky yeah. French, yeah, that co-write. I just can't imagine that. I, I don't know how it works. I wouldn't have any moral objection to it, but... Um, mm. I don't know. I just see it as a very solitary thing. I can't really see how it work. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. Um, Kaz, I'm going to treat you as a celeb because, you, you know, you're not the other. If you were to pick an author to co-write with, who would it be? Oh, what a question. Mm. I um, I want to co-write with T.G. Campbell. Okay. Uh, and what sort of thing would you be, you know, working within T.G.'s normal repertoire, that sort of uh, Victorian era? Yeah. Yeah, but I want to make it like more, um, more supernatural. Maybe more supernatural. Excellent. Ah. Mm. I, I I feel there's a collaboration going on there. I don't know if TG's watching, but you know, maybe you'll find something in your inbox. Uh, question number four: What is special about the new vending machine at Exeter and St David Railway Station? Um, I, think I, know this one. I know this one. Yeah. Are we? Are we do we say the answer? Um, yeah, yeah, go for it when the answer's uh, it, it sells penguin books. It does indeed, yes. Yeah. Um, when I was researching for the quiz, I had to double check this wasn't an April Fool's. Yes, it is an, a, a vending machine that sells books installed by Penguin Random House. It will have its titles constantly updated and will sell them at the recommended retail price. So if you're ever down south and you've got a long train journey ahead of you, which most people traveling from Exeter will have, yeah, get up, grab yourself a book, something to read, and you're well away. Question number five, Harrogate Festival marks its which year this year? Did anyone know or did anyone have a pump? I had a guess, but I'm going to be really well, I've, I've seen the announcements, but I can't remember the exact year. I, I've put 30th. Not like quite, 30th. no, Kaz? Yes, 25th. It's 20, yes. 20 oh, marvellous okay. years. Never been, never been to one myself. Um, I'm off on holiday this year. Whilst uh, Harrogate's on, and that's hardly likely to, to see that change. Uh, that change in anything because kids' school always breaks up the week before the majority of the rest of the country, which means holidays are so much cheaper. So uh, maybe when they've grown up, I'll be able to get to Harrogate. Uh, but on that note, Catherine, you used to be a talking head on television. I understand uh, talking about many things, including whether or not kids should be pulled out of school. Would that yes. be an acceptable excuse to say that? I've got to go to Harrogate when the holidays are cheaper, so I'm going to have to go a week earlier and take the kids out. I, I actually argued yes for that one, um, but I think it was partly night to I I didn't ever pull my kids out for long periods, but mm. I would pull them out for the odd day or two. Um, but I think I was able to argue yes because I live in France, and I know you get fined in the UK if you mm. <laughs> take your children out of school. Um, so... Yeah, that was one of the things I, I argued about. But, I, I, you know, there's there's a lot of um, educational value to holidays. and um, and But also, it's just mad how much cheaper it is to go a week earlier, like you're saying. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Where, where, you go, where are you going on your holiday? Uh, we're off to Tenerife this year, so oh, that, nice. that'll be nice. Yeah, we're looking forward to that one. It's first first getting back on a plane since uh, since the world lost its mind. So that'll be nice yeah. for the kids as well. It's been a long time since they've been a, abroad. So, yeah, but unfortunately, it does mean that with Harrogate always being on that uh, weekend in July, that that's a little bit of a talk. Yeah, I haven't thought, actually, my kids are, are older now, but I haven't mm. thought yeah, that's a problem for a lot of people because, yeah, it's school holidays, isn't it? Yeah, first week of the holidays, yeah, for a lot of people. Yeah. And the second weekend for me, you're flying yeah. back on the Saturday and it's like, oh, I don't feel that I should go just for the Sunday. You never know. Yeah. I won't. But anyway, uh, yes, um, and, and what other things did you talk about in your talking head career? Um, well, all sorts, really. Um, they were mainly fairly fr frivolous. Um, mm. um, yeah, I think I've mentioned in, in the, I, I, I did one about whether, uh, they did some new milk tray adverts a few years mm. ago, and it was whether or not the milk tray man was sexist or not. But then I also did things like um, whether, um, whether children, um, whether vaccination should be obligatory, 
um i can't remember now what it was oh yeah whether whether it was boring to play with your children um just for whatever really mm -hmm. i was just a bit of a rent a gob um but i always enjoyed it it was always fun um yeah Super stuff. Uh, and Kaz, um, what do you think? Should I be allowed to take the kids out a couple of days early so I can get back in time to get to Harrogate? As a teacher, I should probably say no. Oh, <laughs> trouble. Oh. <laughs> I, I was intrigued to hear your point of view. <laughs> what if they were in your class and they were naughty and disruptive? You know, then would that... you know what? I, I, I've missed school to go away with my parents and things. I don't think it hurts. No, I think I think it's absolutely right. I think a couple of days, especially if you're going somewhere away or going to do something a little bit different, I think it makes it can make a big difference. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, obviously, you don't want kids out for weeks on end, but you know, I think yeah. the odd day here and there. It's but I understand. Yeah. I understand the reasons why they have to say no. Yeah, exactly. Right, we shall move on now to round number two. Now, this round is a chance for us to delve into uh, cruises. Because I believe, oh. Catherine, your latest book is called The Cruise. Yes, this this round is called Cruising. Uh, we have now five questions about cruises or cruising or something tenuously related to the idea of cruises and cruising. Not So, you know, unfortunately, it's not five questions just about your book. But, you know, it gives a chance to talk about your book. So that's yeah. great. So this is how we've just, you know, segued into that. Yeah, nice. So, nice. Yeah. <laughs> question number one. And uh, this is how, you know, uh, tenuous it can be. What is the name of Tom Cruise's character in Top Gun? <laughs> his name, not his call sign. No that's points for cool. calls. Oh, that's hard. Oh, yes. That oh. no points for me, then. No points for call signs. Everyone's... I didn't even know his name in, in Top Gun. Did he have a name other than his name? He does have a name. He has a rank and everything. God, I didn't know that. Okay. I'll be amazed when you'll guess that. <laughs> Question one again. What is the name of Tom Cruise's character in Top Gun? His name, not his call sign. Donna's telling me I'm mean. Yeah, I'm... I'm, <laughs> I'm telling me I'm mean. Yep, yeah, I am mean, yes. Question number two. Now, this is a chance to win some extra points here. If you get this answer spot on, um, if you do, it's also witchcraft. Question number two, Wonder of the Seas, launched in 2020, is currently the largest cruise ship in the world. How many guests can it hold? There's oh. five points if you get it spot on. One point within 100 either side. Okay, I know approximately. I thought you might have done your research on that one. Yeah, I did, but I don't remember the exact number. Um, is that so this passengers, yeah? yeah uh, yes, just passengers, just guests. Guests yeah. was the terminology, yes. So five points for spot on, one point for your hundred either side. Mm -hmm. Don't even know if it'd be that close, but anyway. Right, that's question two again. Wonder of the Seas launched in 2020. It's currently the largest cruise ship in the world, but how many guests can it hold? Five if you spot on, one for a hundred either side. There's Wonder of question. the Seas featuring your book about the cruise. It doesn't know the, the cruise ship is um is fictional, but it was I I I I looked at a lot of videos and stats about ships like Wonder of the Seas, yes, and it's uh, it's very much um my, my ship's called Amanis, and it's which means massive, and it's very much based on the kind of giant cruise ships, yeah. Mm, excellent stuff. Oh, Question okay. number three: The city of Santa Cruz is in which U.S. state? That's very telling us. Question three again. The city of Santa Cruz is in which US state? Question number four. YMCA, the 1978 hit by Village People, featured on which album? Maybe there's a clue in the name of the round. Maybe it's not exactly that, but who knows? It'll definitely point you in the right direction. You know, you just got to be paying attention to where we are. Question four again, YMCA, the 1978 hit by Village People, featured on which album? And question number five, actually about cruising. The MS Pacific Princess was the name of the cruise liner on which American rom-com series? 
that ran from 1977 to 1986. Oh. Four specials that aired up until 1990 and starred Gavin McLeod as your Captain Meryl Stubling, uh, Stubing and Bernie Koppel as your ship's doctor, Adam Doc Ricker. Gosh. American? Yep, American. Okay. So, question five. The MS Pacific Princess was the name of the cruise liner on which American rom-com series that ran from 1977 to 86 had four specials that aired up until the 1990s and starred Gavin McLeod as your Captain Meryl Stubbing and Bernie Koppel as your ship's doctor, Adam Doc Bricker. Uh, recently shown, I say recently, it's probably not that recently, uh, but has been shown on the UK in the UK on CBS uh, drama in the last few years, which I know from, you know, watching Judge Judy far too much and seeing it on the adverts <laughs> trailed on there. Anyone here been on a cruise? Catherine, you must have done. Um... I've been on. I'm, to be honest, I'm not a. It's, I'm not a massive cruiser, um, mm. but I've been on a couple of um, cruise press trips. One, one. The actual, the first one was um, actually on Costa Concordia, which was the mm -hmm. ship that later sank. I don't know if yep. you remember that. I, the, the yeah. one off the coast of Italy. Yeah, um, yep. I went on it when it was launched. Um, mm. So some years before, and at the time, it was the biggest in, the, I think, in the world, possibly just in Europe. Um, but now they're literally twice the size of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, so I've only been on a couple. Um, and I can, I can see the attraction. It wouldn't be my choice of holiday, but equally I can kind of, I can totally see the advantages and, and you know, why they're, why, why, why they're good and what they have going for them. You're a cruiser or? I, I've never, no, I, the idea definitely, it definitely appeals to me, but it's, it's yeah. not something I, I've, I've done yet. Um, but it's definitely something I, I would never say never to. I, the Norwegian fjords would be the cruise. Oh yeah. The, uh, yeah. That would be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Kaz, what about you? You've got your sea legs yet? I have never been on a cruise. No? Any any inclination anywhere you'd like to go or I would go Norwegian Fjords as well. Yeah, yeah, Norwegian Fjords. Does that, that feels like a you know quite an exotic one or one of those um one of those Antarctic or yeah, Arctic cruises yeah. where you're going out into a proper wilderness. Yeah. Where you you know, you, you can't yeah, you can't get there any other way. I think that'd be that'd be pretty special. That'd be I've a good one. I've done a mini boat trip on the Norwegian Fjords. A mini boat trip. Hmm. Like on the fjords in Bergen. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, oh, yeah, that'd be good. I'd love to. I'd love to see that. I think that it must be some of the most stunning scenery you'll ever come across. So, yeah, quite a, a fantastic part of the world. Right. We'll quickly go through the answers, shall we? Question number one. Everyone got this one right. <laughs> Tom Cruise's name, Maverick's real name. Anybody? No. Pete Mitchell. Pete Mitchell. Captain Pete Mitchell. <laughs> Nothing from Maverick. That was too before. easy. Gosh. Yeah. Captain Pete I Mitchell. Did anyone get that? Did no. anyone get that? No. Ben just invented that you had a name other than <laughs> We wouldn't know, would we? Yeah. You're going to go and check that now, aren't you? Bro, yeah. right. <laughs> Pete Mitchell. Um, question two. Did anyone have any uh, idea on the... I think I think I don't I don't think it's right within 100 people, but I think it's about 7,000. I think it's a little bit over. It's just under it's it's two under seven thousand oh, six thousand okay. nine hundred and ninety eight. Oh yeah, okay, to pull them. Yeah. So a point there, a point there. Okay. Uh, five points. Anyone in the chat shouts up? They've got six nine nine eight. Let me know. I will be forever scared mm -hmm. of your abilities. Um, question number three: What city? Uh, what state? Sorry, is the city of Santa Cruz in in the US of A? Is it California? It is indeed. Yes, on the northern edge of Monterey Bay is uh, Santa Cruz. Question four. The YMCA album, which featured the 1978 hit Village People. Uh, the Village People album, which featured the 1978 hit YMCA, is... I've guessed Cruise because it made sense. <laughs> close. It's Cruise In. Ah, oh, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Oh, also okay. featured... They also featured the song I'm a Cruiser and Hot Cop. They were, if nothing, subtle, the village people. <laughs> and question number five. The MS Pacific Princess was the setting of which American rom-com series? Love Boat. It was The Love Boat. The oh. Love Boat, indeed. Um, all right. While we're talking about cruising, I think it's a really good time, Catherine, for you to tell us all about the cruise. 
Oh, okay. I wasn't really expecting that. Um, okay, oh, so the no, cruise. Why, why would we talk about it? Sorry. Um, yeah, the cruise. <laughs> so I've been working on the new book. I've barely thought about the last mm. one, so I need to think. Okay. Um, so the cruise was um, partly inspired by the um, during COVID. There were lots of large ships um, mm -hmm. pulled up off the um, the south coast of England. Um, yeah. I found I learned that um, these ships they're not just left there they have to have a skeleton crew mm. um, so it occurred to me that um, these enormous ships with quite a very small crew of people on would actually be quite spooky um, and obviously you've got the usual block room thing um, that you need in this well, you don't need in this thriller, but that I have in mind usually of you know a, a sort of contained amount of people in a, in a small well a large space but a definite space mm -hmm. Um, and also the other thing was at the beginning of COVID, I don't know if you remember the Diamond Princess, which was um, the one that was... Um, is that the one where there was all the COVID on the boat? Yes, yes. early on, and it was kind of moored up off, I think it was Florida. And I just thought how horrific they weren't mm. allowed back on. So it's all these kind of things, really. But anyway, so the cruise itself, it's um, it starts on New Year's Eve and the dancer goes missing. Um, and then two weeks later, the ship is moored up. Um, it's actually moored up for repairs because I didn't want to make it too covid -y. Um, And with the skeleton crew, and then people start um, going missing or being found dead. And it's um, about what's happening to them, really. Excellent stuff. Super. And that's out now, so people can go along and get that whenever they want. Um, and it doesn't tie into the first three books is it? no no they're, they're all standalone yeah yeah the chalet is um set in the french alps mm -hmm. um and the chateau is set in a sort of fictionalized version of where i live in the south of france um and yeah the cruise is as i say on a ship um moored up in the caribbean but yeah they're all totally standalone it doesn't matter if you have or haven't met the others no Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much. Right. We shall move on to round three. Uh, uh, it was going to be because we were going to be joined uh, tonight by Lee Brook, but unfortunately he's had to pull out uh, and we wish him well. And we look forward to having him on in a future episode. But I thought I didn't think you guys would really appreciate a round about footballers wives. So I pulled <laughs> that. That's going to wait for Lee. That's 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 for him in the future. So I bought a, a round. I put it in especially for you, Catherine, because you said in your pre quiz questionnaire that you uh, and a thing for 80s music. Yes. So we oh, have the music yeah. round. Oh, yay. Just okay. for you. Yes. I um, one, then, just yeah. for you. Uh, and because it was quite easy to write in half an hour, no. I've got <laughs> on 80s music. And in there, it's a, it's, a, it's a lyrics round. So I'm going to read the start of the lyric. You guys need to finish the lyric. Tell me the band. Tell me the song. The point for each one of those things that you do. So you can get three points per question. Um, 15 points on offer. It's a bit like Popmaster, only a little bit more Ben and a little less Ken. <laughs> there we go. I should have started doing a Popmaster style round much earlier <laughs> in this quiz. Right, so complete the lyric, complete the song, complete the artist. Number one, and they're all 80s songs, by the way. Number one, you were working as a... Oh, easy. So this, the lyric... The, song, the artist, the song. It's all we're after. Question one again. You were working as a... Question number two. I, sorry, just a just little, little yeah. fact there. I, um, one of my YA novels actually had the title of that song as its title. I can see what how that would work. Yeah, yeah. I can see yeah. how that would work. Yeah. Um, I don't think this next one would work as a maybe as a YA. Yeah, I can see how it could work. Not as you know, it's not quite as um, sinister sounding. But anyway, the lyric is: "Clock strikes upon the hour, and if you've ever been to Reflex, you know this song. If you've ever been to a Reflex, you know this song." Just picture yourself drinking a, a fish bowl full of cocktail. You'll be well away. It'll come flooding back. Clock strikes upon the hour and... So the lyric, the singer, or the art, or the group, or the artist, blah, 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 and the name of the song. Question number three. Tommy used to work on the docks. Union's been on strike. Oh. 
Surprised my wife hasn't come charging in on that one. Tommy used to work on the docks. Union's been on strike. Question number four. Maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm... Oh, I Well, I've got one that's... It's there on the tip of the song, isn't it? It really is. Oh, <laughs> oh that's going to come back to me. I I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one again. Yeah. Maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm... And finally, number five, I'm a man who doesn't know how to sell a contradiction. You come and go, you come and go. Oh, I've got, got the other one, I think, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. I'm expecting 15 out of 15 from both of you here by the faces that I've seen. There's a lot of confidence in the room. There's no confidence in this room. <laughs> Number five again, and I'm going to pop those in the chat for everyone. I'm a man who doesn't know how to sell a contradiction. You come and go. You come and go. <clears throat> so, Kaz, 80s music, is that your scene? Um, I would say yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> what after that? <laughs> I don't know what a reflex is. Well, I do you know. Never to a reflex. Yeah. It's, um, it was. It was. I think they've called. Pop, they've become pop world now. And now, now that the nineties is retro, they play nineties music as well, which is both awesome and terrifying. Um, because I'm not retro. Um, Some incredibly cheesy eighties. Um, yeah. Like in yeah. It was eighties like bars with yeah. Che yeah. The first there was flares, which was seventies. Then they became reflex, which was eighties. Now they're oh, pop. This was they never that. Point. It was called. Um, it's called Planet Earth. It had a revolving mm. dance floor. Oh, I love a revolving dance floor. Can't beat a revolving dance floor. Watching people who've been on a revolving dance floor and forgot it's revolving when they've had too many drinks. It's art. It's art. Mm. It's like, Wait, where was that? I've never, I've never seen a revolving dance floor. Where's that? You know what? Um, it doesn't exist anymore, but it used to be where the railway station in Leeds is. Oh, okay. There, there was one on a boat in um that was docked in um newcastle what was it called uh princess royal or something there was a nightclub on there that had a revolving dance floor okay. I've, I've, seen revolving, I've seen revolving restaurants mm. my, 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 my ship in the cruise has a revolving restaurant Superb, yeah um, well, it does not combine the fact that if you mix a revolving dance floor with incredibly cheap drinks you get a lot of fun yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> watch the people disembark is it, it, yeah. like it says it's like it's like ballet only <laughs> falling over and, Swearing. Someone very confidently in the chat thinks they've got 15 out of 15. I know. I think, I think I've got 15 out of 15. I'm quite confident. Super I absolutely. absolutely do not have 15 out of 15. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Catherine, what sort of, so you, you say you're into 80s music, that's quite a, a broad uh, church. And um, so what sort of them? Um, Oh, well, the really cheesy stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't claim to be cool about it at all. I'm extremely excited that I have Madonna tickets for November. Oh, you're um, very, I, I was trying to get those, but unfortunately, no. Yeah, she was. She said so she was. She was my absolute hero when I was mm. fourteen or fifteen. Um, so yeah, I like all the cheesy stuff, all the stuff that you've um, used here in your in your lyrics. Um, bit of Cure and Depeche Mode and things like that as well. If I'm feeling slightly edgier or the Smiths, but um, mm -hmm. really anything poppy, all good. Yeah. Excellent. If stuff. you have ever met my husband, you will know that one of my favourite bands when I was younger was The Cure. Oh, really? I have a massive crush on Robert Smith. I'm not saying that I've got a slightly messy head, rocky, <laughs> husband, but. They've, yeah. been, they've, been, they've been touring again lately, haven't they? I, I know they mm. came to Toulouse. I, I didn't see them and I don't, I don't know what they were like. But, um, but yeah, they, but they're, they're still doing the rounds. I think, have they got. Did I say they've got a new single out or something? Or... They do. I don't know. He's done something recently. Or is he remixed something by someone? Let me think. Yeah, he's remixed, he's remixed uh, an old Gallagher single, hasn't he? That's what I'd seen. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, Gallagher's latest single, he's remixed or one of his oh. late singles. Yeah. I know he'd done something. I know I'd, I'd, know I'd seen he'd done it. Yeah. Um, right. Shall we have a, a quick look at the answers? Mm -hmm. um, am I going to give a bonus point if anyone sings them at me? No, we'll see. We'll see how good the singing is. Um, question number one You were working as a waitress in a cocktail bar when I met you. Excellent stuff. Exactly what I've got written down. Yes. Uh, the band was. Human League. And the song was? Don't You Want Me. Indeed it was. Indeed it was. There was an advert out when I went to university um, where you've got a brummy chap in a car park, in a, in a petrol station, arguing with his girlfriend, and he's talking the lyrics of the song. Uh, and unfortunately, for some reason, when I went to Sunderland, they all just decided I had a brummy accent, being a Midlander. And uh, I became the Don't You Want Me guy, because apparently that's who I sounded like. Don't you want me, baby? <laughs> I did not sound like it. I do not. You can tell. I've not just worded that out of me, but yeah, that's how I was. I was the don't you want me boy. Uh, question number two. Clock strikes upon the hour and... Shall I go? Yeah, go for it. The sun begins to fade. The sun begins to fade, yes, by... Whitney. And the song is... I want to dance with somebody. Open parenthesis, who loves me, close parenthesis. Yes, indeed. Um, question number three. Tommy used to work on the docks. Union's been on strike. He sounds his luck. It's tough. So tough. Bon Jovi, living on a prayer. Oh, okay. yeah. I've got Van Hoven. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got oh. 14, yeah. Living yeah. on a prayer, though. Yeah, I, couldn't, yeah. I thought that was my, 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 my wife's crying <laughs> now. <laughs> crying. Bon, mm. bon Jovi is the, the ultimate love. They're, they're threatening a tour at the moment as well. So, oh, my, okay. uh, <laughs> I, I've been told that I failed to get Madonna. It's a 40 <laughs> year, so... It's got to be Bon Jovi. I can live with that. Uh, question number four. Now, this one was one that was causing you some trouble. I think you got there in the end. I think yeah, in the end. Maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm... Just like my father, too cold. Too it's bold. Oh, too bold, is too it? Bold. Oh, okay. I'll give you it. I'll give you it. You, oh, okay. You, you might uh, have been... Too, yeah, there was a lot of noise at the gig you went to. You couldn't quite... It was a bold cold. You yeah. couldn't ask him to repeat it. We'll give you that. Yes, <laughs> Doves cry. When doves cry, yeah. Yeah. And question number five. I'm a man who doesn't know how to sell a contradiction. You come and go. You come and go. Karma Chameleon. Yes. Karma, 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 chameleon. Coach Club. Karma Chameleon. Yeah. Super stuff. Um, if you were <laughs> to take um, 80s music as a theme into crime... Is that something you feel you could do? Do you think you could marry yeah. those two loves? It, well, every I, I, I very much meant to have eighties music in the book I'm writing at the moment, mm. um, but in the end, for various reasons, it, the kind of earlier section got pushed to nineteen ninety, so it's a bit more kind of Madonna Vogue and mm -hmm. um, things like that than um, the sort of early stuff I was hoping to. But yes, I think there's. Plenty of scope for the eighties um, because um, part mainly because um, because there was no internet and mm. um, no mobile phones. Mm. It's a lot. It's a lot um, harder to find things out. It's a lot easier to hide things, which is partly why most of my books have a section that's set in the past because things are a lot less traceable mm. then. And it's everything's kind of, a lot more yeah. isolated, yeah. isn't it? By, by, by nature, which absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, yeah, my YA books, as I said, I had well, I had one that was called Don't You Want Me, mm. I had another one that was called Um, So Close to Me, which was after the Sting song. Um, and actually, part of that one ended up in the Chateau, is the sort of backstory. Um, yeah, I, th I think, and also, there's such, such great stories in the some of the 80s songs, there's they're mm. quite narrative, some of them, yeah, there's plenty, plenty of scope. I'm a bit obsessed by the era, really. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Well, that sounds like there's a niche that needs to be scratched there. Yeah, um, exactly. Kaz, um, obviously, you're an avid reader, and I know you're also, you know, a big, big music fan yourself. Is there, is there a musical genre or a musical act, or so, is there a music a room in your crime writing at uh, crime reading? life for a, for a book about a band or a genre or something that you think yeah that'd be i'd need to read that yeah i'm a big um i'm a big punk music fan i think mm -hmm. there's a lot of like prime themed songs for stuff like that um so they'd be quite interesting excellent stuff yeah there's definitely a, there's always a lot of angst in in a lot of punk 
uh, I think that, that that obviously lends itself to, to crimes of passion, especially. So, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of room there. Uh, Donna Morfitt says she was going to take her mum to see Sting at Bedford River Festival, but £70, uh, F that. Donna, it's <laughs> fair to say, at those prices, you would have been stung. <laughs> Straight off the top. Right, moving on to round four before I do any more terrible jokes. This one is Bookmanto. Now, for those of you who don't know how Bookmanto works... This is the round where I take two books, crash them together and create a new book. What I'm looking for from the new title, which contains elements of both books, and the new blurb, which contains elements of both books, is the author of the two original books. Does that make sense? Gosh, that's hard. <laughs> it's really hard to write it as well. Yeah, it is, yeah. Books that work and blurbs that sort of fall into each other. Yes. So... We'll, are they all, sorry, can I, are they all crime or are they all sorts? There are every one of these books that I've created has one element of crime at least, uh, and sometimes it's a classic or sometimes it's another crime, um, oh. namely because it's um, some of them I've tried to make at least a little bit identifiable, so you've got half a chance because this <laughs> one can be a yeah, yeah, can be a nightmare. Right, number one is. The Satsuma of Monte Cristo. <laughs> Gary goes for a pint with a work acquaintance and meets a girl in the pub whose name he doesn't catch, so he refers to as Satsuma. When his work colleague goes missing and he is falsely imprisoned by his jealous friend, he escapes and uses a hidden treasure to exact his revenge. So, I've taken two authors' work there. Who are they? Actually, be the first author would probably write a book called The Satsuma of Monte Cristo. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's a pretty great name. It's not bad, is it? It's not bad. Uh, you know, it, it re reignited my love for this round, this one. <laughs> uh, the Satsuma of Monte Cristo again. Gary goes for a pint with a work acquaintance and meets a girl in the pub whose name he doesn't catch. So he refers to as Satsuma. When his work colleague goes missing and he's falsely imprisoned by his jealous friend, he escapes and uses a hidden treasure to exact his revenge. Do you deliberately include a bit of a French theme for Catherine? It wasn't deliberate, but now <laughs> you say, yes, absolutely, of course I did. Yeah, of course I did. <laughs> uh, question number two. The bookseller of the Blue Car Bunkle. Hmm. A survivor of the Battle of Culloden, now a bookseller in Inverness, attempts to track down the person behind the theft of a gem known as the Blue Carbuncle, using only a hat and a goose as his starting point. Question number two again. The bookseller of the Blue Car Buncle, a survivor of the Battle of Culloden, now a bookseller in Inverness, attempts to track down the person behind the theft of a gem known as the Blue Car Buncle, using only a hat and a goose as his starting point. I would read that mashup as well. Some of these mashups, you know, there's, there's, there's a market out there for them. <laughs> I'm not starting any more books until I finish the two that I'm trying to write. <laughs> but someone else can take it off me. I don't even want royalties. <laughs> Question number three. Strange Sally of the Rings. No, I do want royalties for that one. That's a great title. When Sally Diamond does as she's asked and puts her father out with the rubbish when he dies, it sparks off a fantastic quest into the heart of Mordor to destroy an ancient but powerful ring. Controversially, I really mm -hmm. hate the ring one. You really hate it? Yeah. In, in what respect? I really deeply dislike the story. The book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I can't read it. I, I get to Tom hard. Bombadil and I fall out of it. I'm giving away the clue here, aren't I? Yeah, no, um, we'll no, back, we'll we'll come back to that. I'll struggle with that book later. Okay. Um, yeah. Question three again, strange Sally of the Rings. When Sally Diamond does as she's asked and puts her father out with the rubbish when he dies, it sparks off a fantastic quest into the heart of Mordor 
to destroy an ancient but powerful ring. Yeah, I love the um, the other book that the author did. Mm. Love that, um, but I really struggled with the rings one. Anyway, question number four. How to kill men and get away with someone else's shoes. <laughs> when Kitty Collins kills the man who followed her home from the nightclub and wouldn't leave her alone, a bag mix up at the gym finds two lives becoming intertwined and spiralling out of control. Again, that, that's that's a plot right there. That's a plot. Repeat that one again. Sure. How to kill men and get away with somebody else's shoes. When Kitty Collins kills the man who followed her home from the nightclub and wouldn't leave her alone, a bag mix up at the gym finds two lives becoming intertwined and spiralling out of control. And finally, Daisy Jones and the Wind. I know how she feels. The story of the unravelling of one of the most popular bands of the 70s is retold against the backdrop of the American Civil War by Scarlett O'Hara and Rhett Butler. <laughs> That's the last one again, number five. Pop that in the chat. Daisy Jones and the Wind. The story of the unravelling of one of the most popular bands of the 70s is retold against the backdrop of the American Civil War by Scarlett O'Hara and Rhett Butler. Do we get a point for each author? I need to follow oh, you. Sure. Yes. yes, thank you for asking. Um, Catherine, I know you've, we've sort of touched on this, so I can sort of preempt your answer. But if if you were to have to write with another author or join forces or, or find a book that you think I could adapt something of mine into, is there anything that you think would, would tickle your fancy? Anyone you think, yeah, I wouldn't mind actually sitting down and picking their brains? Um... <laughs> I say I, I think I find it really hard to write with someone else. Mm. Um, yeah. So I don't know, really. Sorry, I'm being really boring. No, I don't, no, no, it's, it's, I don't, I don't it's, really know how to answer. Um, it's my fault for asking the same question in two different ways. No, no it's okay. It's um, I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, obviously, there are lots of authors I admire, but hmm. um, not that I necessarily think I could write with them because they probably have I've, a very different way of doing things to I, yeah. that, that I, I do. I've got, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a better question that I think works for both of you. If oh, there were two authors you'd love to see collaborate, oh, okay, maybe Ooh. anyone can. Kaz, you can pipe in on that one as well because I'm sure you've got uh, ideas and opinions. Anyone in the chat can pipe in with that one as well. Throw those throw those collaborations out there. Love to hear what you think. Um, for me, uh, two authors that I really admire, third, third of wise are um, Aaron, Ker Aaron Kelly, Kelly, mm. Kelly and Louise Candish. I think they could write a brilliant mm. book together, but equally, if they want to, I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, I imagine they have different we'll, ways we'll make of doing them. things. We'll make them. Sorry, I, I, think, I didn't catch that one, Kaz. When, when I think can you imagine an Ellie Griffith, William Shaw mashup? That would be. That would be yes. That would be a good combination. Absolutely. No, I still didn't hear that. Who was that? Ellie Griffith and William Shaw. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've got a uh, one shout out for Mike Craven and Chris Carter from Donna. Again, I could I could see how that would work. Actually, I can I can see how they would uh, gel together quite nicely. Um, should we have a quick look at the answers then? In Bookman, so. This was really hard. It is a bit of a tricksy yeah. one, isn't it? Yeah. It's really yeah. hard for you to write it, I imagine, but yeah, it made me realise I don't oh, know it, it's, it's, it, things. Yeah. I have to devote a lot of brain power to this one, <laughs> to make some research. And that's why it's not in every version of the quiz, unfortunately, because it, it, it yeah, it's painful. Um, <laughs> the Satsuma of Monte Cristo, who were the authors that I've stolen from there? Um, Alexander Duma and mm -hmm. Mortimer. Indeed, yes, Bob Mortimer and Alexandra Dumas. Uh, yes, the Satsuma Complex and the Count of Monte Cristo. Question number two, the bookseller of the Blue Carbuncle. Who have we pulled together there? I only know one author in this one. I don't know either of these. What one's a star? Uh, S.G. McLean. Indeed, S.G. McLean, S. McLean uh, the bookseller of Inverness. 
And uh, let me just say, why have I not got that written down? The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle is actually a short story featuring Sherlock Holmes uh, by Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, yes, and that's he does indeed use a hat and a goose as his starting point to find <laughs> a gem thief. Because it's Sherlock, why wouldn't he? Uh, Sal, Strange Sally of the Rings, the two authors that we've got there. I think this is the only one I got, actually. Um, Liz Nugent and J.R. Yep. Tolkien. Indeed, yes, Liz Nugent and J.R. Tolkien, Strange Sally Diamond and Lord of the Rings, the much maligned in this theme tonight, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Uh, Catherine, any strong feelings on Lord of the Rings? Um, I don't like any of those books. I, I read that, read The Hobbit at school, oh, um, and it's just not my thing at all. And actually, I went, I went, think I went to see, they did films of them, didn't they, a while mm. back? And oh, so boring, it's just really not my thing at all. Yeah. I know he's very much admired, and I'm sure he's an excellent author, but I just don't get on with him at all. Yeah, no, like, Lord of the Rings are by the sound of it for some reason. Yeah, yeah you're in good company. Yes, <laughs> there we go. There we go. One of the few places where you'll get everyone in the room saying, No, no, no Tolkien, no, it's, it's not, that, not our bag. Right, how to kill men and get away with someone else's shoes. Anyone know any of those? I know Colin Hoover, Hoover, but I don't know the second one. No, not Colin Hoover. I'm no, no. Uh, the first one was Katie okay. Brent. Oh, how to kill men and get away with it. And the second one is Someone Else's Shoes by Jojo Moyes. Oh, okay. Very badly. And finally, Daisy Jones and the Wind. I know both of these. I think. Oh, well, let's hear them, please, Kaz. Uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid. Correct. Yeah. And Margaret Mitchell for Gone with the Wind. Indeed, yes. Daisy Jones and the Six, Taylor Jenkins Reid, uh, currently uh, showing on Amazon Prime, the adaptation. And Margaret Mitchell, we've gone with the wind, uh, also adapted uh, more famously as the film, I would suggest more famously. Um, yeah. Uh, Donna's complete opposite of me. She loves Lord of the Rings and couldn't get into The Hobbit. Donna Moore fit the opposite of me. Never saw that one coming. <laughs> Evening, Donna. Great to have you with us as usual. Uh, right. Before we go into the last round, let's uh, have a quick look at the scores, please, ladies. Let's... I like to ramp up the pressure. We have to have it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I think I've got 20. Excellent stuff. Cal? Had school. Um, 24. 24. Excellent. Some good high scores. I don't know how many points this quiz is out of today. I haven't got a scoobies at all. It's the next round five, I think, probably. Sorry, Kaz, I'm struggling to hear you again. I think you, you, my phone's a little bit Sorry. If it's round is five, I think it's 40 points. There we go. Somebody's kicked. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're here with me, <laughs> covering the things that I don't know. It's, it's good It's good to have somebody who's like in control of the situation. We should do this more often. Uh, oh, we've got a 26 from Donna. Excellent. Wow. Okay, then. Final round. General knowledge. Nice, easy way out of the quiz tonight. Number one. Who is the comedian behind Alan Partridge? Oh, I know that one, yeah. Question one again, who is the comedian behind Alan Partridge? Question number two. According to the Met Office, was March the wettest or the driest in over 40 years in England? According to the Met Office, was March the wettest or the driest in over 40 years in England? I'll give you a clue. If you looked out your window, you know the answer. Question number three. Hamza Youssef is the new First Minister of which country? Question number three again. Hamza Youssef is the new First Minister of which country? Question number four. Five planets lined up in the night sky last month. Can you name the five? Now, no hedging your bets, people. No writing down all of the planets, because there's only seven if you work out that one of them can't be it because we're on it. And going, well, I've got I've got all five because I've written down seven. 
five planets. If you name more than five, you lose all your points. <laughs> so no hedging bets. Write down five planets. You get a point for each one you get right. But if you name six, you get nothing. If you name seven, you get nothing. I'm not having people playing the, playing the system. <laughs> um. And if you write down eight or nine, God help you. Question four again, which five planets, five planets lined up in the night sky last month, but can you name the five point for each? Only if you name five maximum. And finally, number five, which European country will officially join NATO tomorrow? That is the quiz. We will go through the answers in a moment. I'll just repeat that last one again. Which European country will officially join NATO tomorrow? Uh, so, Catherine, you've touched upon the fact that there's a, a new work in progress. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about what's next for you then? Um, it's, um, it's, it's in the same vein as the other ones in that it's set in a luxurious holiday resort. Um, this one's set in the Maldives. Um, it's called The Island. Um, so we're breaking away from the seas this time because um, we couldn't come up with a um, <clears throat> title of the Gamma Sea that we all liked. Um, and um, yeah, so it's set, yeah, luxurious. Um, resort in the Maldives and then there's a backstory which is set in 1990 which is um I don't know if anyone else remembers gate crasher balls that were yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Uh, so it's I didn't go over I, I, I'm okay so, yeah, yeah so it's, the, um, it's set around the kind of version of um something like that sort yeah. of attended by public school kids um of that era um mm. and yeah there's some quite inventive poisonings as usual um so yeah yeah same, same kind of thing as, as usual really um, and have you managed to get a, a research trip in for that one yet or? um i did actually i was very lucky i i went to the maldives um that, that was i mean it wasn't specifically a research trip it was a press trip i was going um to write about for the press um so yeah i managed to go and actually i should have said this this one is also um it's it's based around the press trip it's a group of journalists going to okay. visit mm -hmm. an opening because um i always think it's quite interesting the dynamics on these kind of trips where you get a very disparate group of people mm -hmm. sent together um to just go and research these beautiful places um, yeah my brother-in-law is a travel journalist and he gets oh, okay. sent some far from places and uh, i can imagine that yeah he would uh share a similar sort of thing so I, I, i'm going to steer him towards that because i think who, who, does he, who does he work for is he freelance or uh, uh, he's freelance he does a lot of his travel writing for the times um okay time. so um he's been out to places like argentina doing all the, the sort of ranching down in the south part of argentina and places like that um mm -hmm. he went out to the caribbean and got stung by some sort of really poisonous fish but it, was all right. it hurt him but he was all right <laughs> what's his name john holmes okay yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he does a, he does that as a as a gig, which is a, yeah. yeah often, often, you know, leaves you a little bit green and jealous. Yeah, it's <laughs> not it's, 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 it's bad. Yeah, it could be I'll carry his bag. He's just, you know, he just won't let me. <laughs> I imagine, uh, I imagine, I imagine he has another job as well. He probably does other stuff too. Yeah, yeah. He works in radio production, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's his, that's most, his day job. Yeah, yeah so nice he's busy. Yeah. Uh, and Kaz, um. Good chance to talk to you about the uh, upcoming uh, festival that we've got going on with the UK CBC. Um, a couple of months ago now, last push for tickets because there can't be many left. There are not many left. They are really cheap for twenty pounds per day. <laughs> available on our website. Yep, and that's um, ukcrimebookclub.com. Yes, intensively named. Yep. So there's no excuse for not getting. You can head over there and you can pick up your ticket to the UK Crime Book Club live. Uh, who have we got talking at this uh, this year's event? Just to remind people if they don't know where I already. Well, we're finishing with a quiz. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, we have got oh, we've got all sorts of people. We've got a best of Yorkshire panel with the Bridge Dog and Nick Swansall and Andy Barrett. Um, I'm going to miss people out because I can't remember all the people on the list. We've got um, a historical panel with Judy Campbell, Chris Beck, and Francis Brody. We've got women of crime fiction, Middle East mystery, Gillian Godwin, and Maggie James, and Alec Griffiths, and Sean and Leslie Thompson, headlining out for us, and the Blood Brothers, coming, and all sorts of other amazing authors that I've probably forgotten to name. Super stuff. And I can see that somebody has popped the uh, link for. Lovely. that and for Catherine's website into the chat so 
that's great yeah. stuff so you can head along to find out a little bit more about the uh festival and about Catherine's books if you'd like uh let's quickly though go through the answers and then we shall uh wrap this up so question number one alan partridge who's the actor no I steve coogan Steve Coogan, you're a bit of a fan, aren't you, Catherine? I am, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm quite magic about it, yes. It's, um, I, I would ask why, but I think it's self-explanatory. It's, just a it's genius, so funny, it's so funny. So yeah. funny. Yeah. You're supremely powerful. funny. A 30-plus 30 yeah. plus, 30 plus year creation, a comic creation that's lasted yeah. that long. He's just brilliant, yeah. You've got to be, you've got to be quite good to manage <laughs> to make that funny for 30 years, and he, and he has done uh, yeah, constantly. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, right, wettest or driest March in over 40 years in England. I went wettest. It was the wettest. It was clearly the wettest, the miserablest. Even now that the sun's been out today, it is still bloody freezing. We need to move. I need to get out of this country. I need to go somewhere hot. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. This, this, this winter and spring so far have broken me. They've broken me. Uh, what's the weather like in the south of France, Catherine? Um, yeah, it's all right. Actually, it did rain today. Um, but, yeah, generally it's obviously better than it is in the UK. Yeah, that's, that's what we like. Somebody's at least somebody's enjoying the weather. <laughs> uh, question number three: Hamza Youssef is the new first minister of which country? I don't know. <laughs> Can I I it's Scotland. Oh. It's taking over from Nicola Sturgeon. Hamza Youssef. Uh, the four, the five planets that lined up in the night sky last month. Uh, mine's the best. In, uh, I've got. Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, and Mars. You get four points for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which one's wrong? Oh. Did you? I went for them in order from the sun. So I went Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. You can get four points as well. The correct answer is Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Uranus, and Mars. And they all lined up in the night sky. So, yeah, four points, five points if you get all of those. No points if you write down six. No points if you write down seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. Yeah, start to worry then. Uh, question number five. Which European country officially joins NATO tomorrow? Don't know. Uh, it is. Uh, we're getting to the end of the quiz. And I can say Finn, because it is the Finns. The Finn, Finland is joining NATO tomorrow after Turkey dropped its concerns. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the quiz. So I'll just let my guests toss up their scores. And we can uh, also get the people playing at home to let me know how they've done. I, I think I've like got 26 then, but I don't entirely know the scoring. Thirty-three is the first score that's come through from Donna. That's a that's a cracking score, Donna. That's and you moan that my quiz is too hard. So you were moaning earlier in this quiz, <laughs> Donna. You scored thirty-three. No, no. <laughs> I think I've got 26. 26. Sam Brownlee is also coming with 26. Kaz? I've gone 30. 30. Excellent stuff. We'll see if any more scores come in. But in the meantime, I would like to thank very much Kaz for stepping in at the last minute tonight and coming and join us. Uh, thank you very much. And looking forward, obviously, to seeing you at Leeds in a couple of months' time and seeing a lot of other folk there as well. And of course, Catherine, thank you very much for coming on and talking to us about um, the island and the cruise. Obviously, the, the Chateau, the Cabin, and everything else, and 80s music, and uh, disdain for J.R.R. Tolkien, and so forth. It's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure to have Thank you very much, folks. Uh, thank you as well for everyone who's been playing along at home. It's been really great to have you uh, in the chat as usual. Thanks so much for all your input and everything. Uh, all that's left for me to say is uh, I've been Ben Bruce, and I still will be next month. Good night. <laughs>